Well, hey there, church family. Thank you for tuning in to get a little bit of an update. For those of you who were in service this morning, uh, you're already going to have most of this information, but we realize not everybody can always attend, so we want to make sure we keep everybody in the loop to the best of our ability. So um, as I shared this morning to those uh, at worship, uh, we have a problem. Fairview, we have a problem. But the good news is that uh, not only is it a good problem to have, uh, we also have a good plan to address this problem. And so that's what I want to kind of explain a little bit to give you a little more context and details. Our problem has to do with people, which is often the case in, uh, in a church, but not maybe in the way that you would think. Our problem right now is uh, having to do with people in the worship center uh, in regards to our attendance capacity. I told you it's a really good problem to have. If you've been with us the last couple weeks, you know that some Sunday mornings, pretty frequently, uh, the place is really full. It can actually be hard to find a seat, um, especially if you don't get there a little bit early. It's it's pretty packed. And so um, we only have 300 chairs um, in our worship center, and so it can fill up pretty quick. So let me give you a couple numbers here. We've had, I think, 32 or 33 Sundays so far this year, depending on when you're seeing this video, uh, 20 times out of those 32 Sundays, 20 of those, uh, we have had 70% capacity in our worship center or higher. 13 times we've hit uh, 80% capacity and seven times we've hit 90% capacity. And so that's about once a month. We are just absolutely maxing it out and um, uh, get to the point where it's just not really a great fit for a lot of people. Now, this doesn't only impact our worship center, our worship service. It's a really big deal in kids' ministry as, as well. Uh, 17 times out of the 32 or 33 Sundays uh, we've had this year, uh, 17 times we've had 80 or more kids and adults back in the kids' wing. Yeah, I know. You can always hear singing and laughing and uh, stuff coming through the walls. And, and that's why, because we've had well over 80, sometimes into the 90s, um, in our kids' ministry. And um, we want to make sure that we are doing the best that we can to not only accommodate the current growth that we have, but the, the, or accommodate the current attendance that we have. That's all of us who already call Fairview Fellowship home. But we want to create space for future growth. So let me break both of those down just a little bit more. Uh, let's address this one first. Accommodating our current attendance. Super important that we have a, a space available for our current church body. Of those 300 seats that we have available um, every single Sunday, the times that we've been 70% full, that leaves about 90 seats. Uh, when we've been 80% full, that leaves about 60 open seats. And the 90% full rate leaves only about 30 seats in there. And remember, that's happened seven times um, so far this year, 90% full. So that's almost uh, once a month we've had a situation where we're 90% full. Now, 30 seats may seem like a lot, but if you've tried to find those seats, uh, good luck. And especially if you're coming in at, at, at close to 10 o'clock when we begin service um, and you have a family of five, four or five, six people trying to sit together, it can be a challenge. And so depending on what Sunday you're here and whether the attendance has spiked up or down, uh, it can be a bit of a challenge. But for those of us who are members and regular tenders, I know it's also exciting. It's fun to see the growth taking place. However, I want to challenge you to think a little bit like a visitor. Think about a first-time guest who's coming to church and, and, and hoping to uh, you know, connect not only in, in worship and not in, in the teaching, not only in the teaching, but to get to know people or to talk to people and to you know, come to church, find a parking space, come in to the worship center, and then you realize there's almost no seats. It can just be a, a, not a great feeling. I, I've compared it to a movie theater for those of you who like to go to the theater. And if you walk into a movie theater near the time when the show is supposed to begin and it's 80% full, I know for me and Chelsea, we don't like that because I'm going to sit behind someone who's really tall or wearing a hat. I'm going to have to sit too close or too far back. I'm going to sit somewhere I don't want. And so even before the movie starts, I've, I've kind of had a, a negative experience. And, and we don't want that. We don't want that for people coming into church. We don't want this to be a distraction or a discouragement if they can't even find a place to sit with their family or their friends. And then again, thinking about the kids, uh, kids ministry, these are issues of safety, um, uh, security as we deal with these space issues. We are going to, as we grow, as, as we've seen growth continue, and, and traditionally here in the fall, August, September, October, we see uh, our numbers go up 
considerably. And uh, we're pretty close to the point in Kidsman that just for safety, we, we may have to consider just turning people away. If you if your kid is a certain age and that room has filled up, we just, we, for the sake of safety, we can't put more kids in a room than those rooms are designed to hold or that we have the leaders prepared to take care of those kids. Uh, and we obviously don't want to do that. So while a full church, a full worship center, and a really full dynamic kids ministry is exciting in a lot of ways, it can also be um, discouraging to others and, and not super hospitable to those that we want to welcome as guests. So um, in both of those situations, the worship center and in kids ministry, the one thing I, I'm not willing to do as a pastor is to just accept it, that it's full and that for the sake of you know space, hey, the people who are here are here, um, because I feel like that goes against our vision of, of bringing and building and sending. I feel like that is, although we would never do this, but I feel like it's, it's um, standing out in front of those doors with our arms crossed and saying, you know, sorry, we, we don't have any more room. We don't, we don't need you here. We don't want you here. And um, I, I don't want that to be the case. I'm not willing to be satisfied with, well, we've grown to, you know, we filled every one of our 300 seats in worship and our 80 to 90 kids and kidsmen, and, and we're done here. And that's because I know Noble County and I know um, Kendallville, and I know that you have neighbors and you have coworkers and you have friends that don't have a church they call home, don't have a church where they are regularly attending and hearing the gospel and 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 learning about uh, how to live life within the kingdom of God. And so, um, I want to the second part of this make sure that we create space for future growth. This is really, really important to us. So, so thinking specifically about our vision of bringing people to Jesus, building people up to live like Jesus, and sending people out to serve like Jesus. This is so important. This has been what we've uh, focused on for eight years. We're turning eight years old this, this year as a church, and, and bringing and building and sending has been a key and essential part of every year we've been a church community. Uh, how can we be effective in the bringing, in the building, and even thinking about getting to the sending if we don't even have chairs for people to come sit in, if we don't even have room in the building? We need to create that space. And so accommodating our current attendance, which is growing, and creating space for that future growth, the answer that the elders have talked about and prayed about and done research on and the staff has done the same uh, is that we are going to be moving to two services, two uh, worship services. Right now, you know, we meet at 10 a.m. We're going to be moving to two services on October uh, 15th at 9 and 11. Now, uh, I'll say it right off the bat. I know uh, what a lot of people are thinking. This is inconvenient. And, and, and I totally agree. It is inconvenient. It's inconvenient to preach two times. It's inconvenient to have uh, you know two sets of schedules for people serving, things like that. But um, I'll, I'll say, just speak for myself again, and I hope I can lead by example on this. I am excited. I'll welcome personal inconvenience if it means uh, that we get to uh, lessen the inconvenience for new people coming to hear about Jesus, coming to learn about the kingdom of God. I'm fine being inconvenienced for that reason. I can handle that. In Philippians 2, 3, and 4, we're reminded that we, following Christ's example, are supposed to be the kind of people that don't look primarily to our own needs and wants and interests but that we look first and foremost to the needs and wants and interests of others, the people that we consider more important than ourselves. So how exactly are we going to do this? Well, it's going to take a little bit of work, and, and, and that's why we have some time. We have, I think, um, five, six, seven weeks before we get to October 15th. And so we have time to plan and prepare and to promote and make sure the whole church body knows that we're making this change. Uh, these six, seven weeks will give all of our ministry teams, from the coffee team to the parking team, the worship team, every single team that so many of you serve on, uh, it'll give us time to reconsider how we can serve together um, during two services. Some teams, uh, like the worship team most likely, will, will have one team that serves all Sunday. Other teams might have uh, someone who comes in, think the ushers, the greeters, maybe the coffee team, they come in for one service and then the other, a different team comes in, things like that. Some schedules will have to be adjusted for sure. Um, but as we do this, I, I just want to encourage us as well, um, church doesn't exist primarily for me. It doesn't even exist primarily for you. You know, we are part of the church body, and, and as we come to worship and grow in our faith, we're, we are all a part of it. But I think a huge factor, a huge uh, segment of the population for whom Fairview Fellowship Church exists for is the next person. 
it's your neighbor, it's your coworker, it's your boss or your employee, it's your um, someone that you go to school with, it's it's someone down the street that you've been building a relationship with. That's who we're doing this for, and that's partly who our church exists for. It's the next person that we're going to tell the gospel to, we're going to share our lives with. And so um, I want to do everything I can to make sure that we have space for that person, for that family, for that mom, or for that dad. And um, going to two services, while it's going to be inconvenient, while there's going to be some some things that we're going to have to figure out probably as we plan, and then later that we figure out on the fly, we're going to need to do this with a sense of self-sacrifice and joy, um, choosing to embrace the growth that God has entrusted with us, that God has blessed us with, and now we have the opportunity to steward that growth and that opportunity really well. So a couple quick things, maybe, um, that, that, again, things that you might be thinking that maybe I can address. Um, I, I, the first response, as I've shared this with people, um, is, is this. I, I don't know if I'm excited about it because I'm really going to miss everybody. And I feel that too. I, I, I know it's going to be hard to say you know, goodbye potentially on a Sunday morning and not see half of the people we normally see. But just think about it like this. On a given Sunday now, do you see everybody? Do you see everybody on a Sunday already? Do you know everybody? I really think that splitting to two, transitioning to two services, growing to these two services may not necessarily be the alienating transition that a lot of us might first think it's going to be. Um, I think it creates opportunity to engage with people on a more one-on-one level. A really packed room, it can be hard. Um, Again, thinking especially about guests, it can be a challenge to um, actually have a personal connection, to have a conversation when the room feels so full and you may feel like an outsider. Um, Also, you're going to hear a lot about this. I'm going to be challenging everyone to prayerfully consider, and this won't work for everybody in the church, but I want to challenge our church to consider, um, as we transition to two, considering to serve one and attend one. Now, this is a way that it, it, it fixes that that potential issue of not connecting with people, but it also helps meet a really uh, practical need, is that we will need um, some of our teams to grow in total volunteers. So to serve one and to attend one. Let's take our... Take our greeters, for instance, uh, to come in at the nine o'clock service and to serve as a greeter and to say hello and welcome people to church and and, and help new guests and visitors get connected and checked into kids ministry. Um, And then continuing to hang out in the connection point, enjoy coffee during the service. But then when the second service begins, taking off your name tag and going on into church. And like I said, this won't work for everybody, um, but for many people, I think it will. To serve one and attend one is a really um, impactful and effective way uh, to make sure that you continue to see the whole church body on a Sunday morning while also helping us uh, fill those needs when it comes to volunteers. I know other people have have said, well, I I really like 10 o'clock. It works really well for our family. And again, I go back to the issues of convenience. We're not necessarily here to be, uh, we don't exist for our convenience, but for the convenience of others. And I know that having two options for a service time is more convenient than having one because now people have a choice. And I know uh, even with our own family, sports schedules, travel, baseball, things like that, uh, the Sunday mornings can get really busy. And having a 9 a.m. service is going to be a helpful thing for a lot of families who may otherwise have to head to a game or or miss service. And so having these two services, I think, will really open up um, more opportunities along with the opening up of more seats. So that's it. That's our problem. It's people. But like I said at the beginning, it is such a good problem to have. I'm so thankful that we have this problem. We have amazing teams of elders and staff and ministry team leaders who have been praying about this for months. We actually began the the, the prayers and the conversation about this last year as we saw the numbers continue to go up. Um, and now we're ready to do this. And so I just want to say thank you in advance for your flexibility, for um, approaching this with good attitudes and seeing the potential and the possibility not viewing it as a problem, but as a opportunity for us to continue to steward well uh, the many men and women and families and teenagers who are coming uh, to Fairview to uh, uh, hear about the gospel, to figure out what role church may have in their lives, and to um, grow in their faith, and then for all of us to continue to figure out what it means to bring and build and send. I'm sure you have plenty of questions, and I would love it if you would message us. Don't don't just uh, if, if if you are not looking forward to this, I would really really love to hear that and hear why, like what things particularly seem discouraging or frustrating, so that over the next six and seven weeks, as we 
pray and plan and prepare, we can hopefully try to address some of those things. If we're not aware of them, it's hard to address. So please don't be shy. Send me an email, markb at fairviewfellowship.church. Welcome to send us a message here on this platform, comment, whatever works for you. But also, if you're excited about this, if you see the potential for growth, I would love to hear from you as well. If you'd be able to just to share that excitement, like what what uh, makes this sound exciting to you or intriguing or um, what are you encouraged by as you hear this announcement? I would love to hear that as well. And we'll take all those things into consideration as we plan and move towards October 15th. I'm, I'm incredibly excited for the opportunities that lie ahead. And I hope you are as well. There'll be some work. It'll require our self-sacrifice. Um, it requires some change and patience and flexibility. But I'm really, really um, trusting. I have confidence that this is where God is leading us. He's not going to lead us to a place that he doesn't want us to go. So I'm excited to head into this new direction, this new season of life in our church, and I hope you are as well. I'll look forward to continuing the conversation. Until then, we'll see you later.